next. We have the routes up, we have all the addresses configured. We should be able to jump right into SDM and get things working. And since we're launching it from this, it's going to be 10.10.10.1. 10, 10, 10, Launch, and SDM is always difficult to get running, so you're going to have to be lucky. Um, you have to I had to disable pop-ups, I had to make sure Java, you know, was allowed to run, had permissions. And this would not work in IE. I had to try it on both. I don't normally use IE, but once that up once that's done up loading up, uh, it'll show all your hardware type and I believe it should say thirty seven twenty five, because I believe that's what we're using. Uh, and yes, thirty seven twenty fives. All right, good. Now we want a VPN connection. Pretty simple, and it's a site to site. All these are all different types of VPNs you can have, um, and this is how you edit all the little components that they ask you to create and all that. And this is going to do all the SDM defaults, which, quite frankly, you don't want. Um, this is the Jerry Tunnel allows uh, routing information to be, to be passed um, between routes. We don't want a quick setup, we want a step-by-step -step wizard. So, select an entry. 00, zero is in our external interface. It's on the 12, 12, 12, 2. So, we're going to do a peer with a stack IP address, and it's going to be, should be 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 2. So, good, good, good. 11.11.11.2. .11 .11 we're going to do a pre-shared key and just do Cisco. Obviously, production environment, not a good idea. Alright, and let me see. IC proposals. You kind of can't change that one. That's the SDM default. We're going to change that when we extract the configuration because I just, I never like defaults. As well, that's also a default. We're going to leave it the way it is. Alright, traffic to protect. Since we're on this network, we're going to protect the 10 10 10 traffic. 10.10.10.0. .10 .10 Four and one seven. This is the remote network, the internal remote. Some two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero slash twenty four. Next, simple enough. Just shows you that, and asks you to test VPN. We're not going to do that obviously because we haven't set it up on the other side. So, pretty much what I like to do now is you generate the mirror. And the view device 1112. Basically, what you do is what I do at least do a copy, then you go back to your desktop, do a new text document, and then just do a little tell this thing to shut up, and then do a little paste. Now, scan policy one uh, that just shows the initial policy for connection. Um, authentication pre-share, that's where we entered the Cisco, and it'll show it somewhere down here. We'll look at that later. <clears throat> there we go. Key, Cisco. And that's the address. Obviously this is a generated a mirror image, so what it takes is the original one just swaps all the things, so when our, our router that we just configured that on, it's going to say 11, 11, 11, 2. Not 12, 12, 12, 2. But this is for the router on the other side. So authentication is pre-share, that's the Cisco key. Encryption is triple des, hash sha. I actually should probably bump that up. Um, we'll do that later, or we we'll, won't do it at all. But anyway, you can bump it up, change it here. Once you know the exact commands, you can change it here. You're gonna have to change it for uh, make sure what you change on one side, change it on the other, the other side. So anyway, that's um, that's all the configuration for IceCamp Group Two. That's the lifetime for um, the. I believe it is for. The certificate that's passed. I'm not sure though. Alright, crypto ice camp key policy, or it's key, Cisco address, blah blah. This is the IPsec, this is the second um, transformation that occurs. This is using ESP, triple does, SHA, so for it's tunnel, which means it's, it's encrypting both the data and the header. If it was transport, it would just encrypt the data itself and not the header. Alright, access list. That allows traffic to go through the router, otherwise the router would say, no, you're not allowed to block it. That's just the remark for it. And then you permit 
anything, and since this is for the far router, this is for this router, it's going to allow anything from this address, 172.16.0.0 slash 24, that's a wildcard mask, and it's match, 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 and then allow everything. You can do it like 1, 2, 3, whatever number between 0 and 255, it just that depends on what sort of host you allow from there. 2, 10, 10, 10, 0, obviously, again, same thing. All right, this is what you apply to the interface. In this case, it would be FA00. You would apply CryptoMap SDM CMAP1. That's all you type, and then it would apply to the CryptoMap to the peers interface, blah, 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 blah. We're going to change this for one thing. Um, to, to core. Simple enough. Transform set, triple des, etc. Set peer, match address, exit really simple stuff. Alright, so all we do is a copy, go into our remote configuration mode, and then do a simple right click and it pretty much pastes everything. Then we gotta apply um, in FA0 slash 0 crypto map crypt crypto map and then you just type in the word, which would be SDM C map one. Boom. All right. Yep, ice camp is on, so you know that it's on at least. Next, we're going to go through configuration or testing at least. All right. Now we're back in SDM, and hopefully, if everything went according to plan, we should just be able to click test tunnel and it should be able to go through and say tunnels up. All right, we're going to click start. It's going to we're going to show the details here. And check tunnel status. Successful for interfaces are up. Then it's going to check configuration. Um, all that appears to be working good. Routing is valid. Everything's boom 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 boom. boom. Now we're going to do this. All right. The host and source network 10, 10, 10, 1, and we're going to go to 172.16.0.1. All right, continue. Now, here is where we pull up, I believe, the core router. And this should, there we go. Now it's going to show us all the debugging. This is going to go by way too fast for you to notice, but um, this is extremely helpful and essential in figuring out, you know, if it's up and running, if the tunnel is working. So, let's go through this. That means security association is created. Okay, it's creating two of them. All right, whatever. All right, so apparently the tunnel is up now. Oops, no, I didn't mean to click. This. All right, tunnel's up. Don't ever trust that. Now we're gonna do a ping, and this is the easy way to test it. Ping protocol. Don't enter anything else. Shut up. And the IP would be. Yeah, that's the protocol. <clears throat> Next, we're going to target IP address since this is on the main core, 172.16.0.1. And what we do is we enter extended commands and we source it from the internal. So it doesn't hit try and ping from the external, which is going to work no matter what. So you do 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 just go through all those. Boom, successful. We're good. Another another few things to check is show crypto IPsec SA, which shows a lot of um, what you're, you know, the IPsec local address 12, 12, 12, 2, local identity, remote identity, current peer 11, 11, 2, port 500. Um, <laughs> everything, everything's up and running. And then you can do crypto show, I believe, crypto ISEC, spot crypto right, and it might work, boom, destination source, boom, boom, active, and that's pretty much it, that's how you set up a VPN connection 
uh, site to site with two Cisco routers. It's really easy, especially using SDM. All right, this is how you will tell if your routing will work. The route print, and it prints out all the routes. As you can see, the 11, 12, 1, 7, 2, 16 networks are on there, and they're going out that gateway. Now, to add stuff, you just do route add, destination mask, type in the mask, the gateway. Don't worry about the metric interface unless you really want to. And at the end, you add a slash P to make it persistent, which makes it so it doesn't um, delete it every time you shut down and restart. And that should be it.